What is up guys, welcome back to today's Destiny 2 build session. With today's showcase focusing on a build PvP that will net you a lot of kills via 1-2 shots, but also net you some hate along the way. This is a build that will involve the use of 1-2 to two type of players no matter their resilience on a consistent basis, and if you manage to learn the ups and downs of the build, you can prevent players from closing the gap and catching you out. It is a tough build to master with plenty of ways to counter it, but it can shut down players very easily when you have the option of being empowered all the time and dying only makes you stronger. We are going to also maximise the use of Charged with Light, Empower and Rifts and the underrated Stag Helm to achieve all of these goals and items used are accessible to the general masses so it shouldn't be too hard to put together. Funnily enough, this idea came to mind from watching two other content creators who cover certain aspects of the build and I used their reviews to create something of interest to others. One video created by Cryptbuff reviewed the Biting Wind Bow and why you should look for a swashbuckler role and how it could turn your bow from a two shot to a one shot. Another video created by Dirty Hottie was based around a two tap build for PvP using the Dead Man's Tail and how you can enhance it further through buffs. Both of these videos gave me the insight I needed to create a similar PvP setup that would be effective in shutting players down one after another through a simple method. I have placed their YouTube in the comment section and I highly recommend you give them both a visit and subscribe to their content as they provide quality content that is worth investing in. Before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I would really appreciate a like and a sub as it goes a long way for me. So the subclass I've chosen is the Atonement of Control which will be combined with the Stag Helm because of its passive and flexible nature of being used with any classes in game. The Stag Helm is a very unique exotic that doesn't get a lot of praise for what it does and it's understandable why when you compare it to other exotics for PvP. The exotic will provide you the option of gaining back 50% of your rift energy when you hit critical health and upon dying you drop a healing roll for your team to use. Now for a build like this, this seems like the best choice to mix with as we'll be utilising our empowering rifts a lot and support our teammates after death via the dropping healing rifts. Since this is PvP, the exotic has a lot more usage in terms of activating which we can use to our advantage without needing to rely heavily on investing in just our recovery stats. The subclass now is probably the best offensive and defensive setup that we can use to maximise our playstyle and prevent players from pushing. Ionic Trace will provide me energy for all of our abilities per kill we make which will allow us to utilise our grenades, rifts and ball lightning to its full advantage. The effects of the pulse wave perk will work wonders for us and will work alongside this stag's perk so the moment we are injured we will not only get a boost in reload speed for all of our gear but also gain rift energy as well. We also have our super that we can briefly activate and save on the whim. This pretty much allows us to be aggressive in nature or defensive and either one will really impact the flow of a match for us. Attunement of Elements is also a great choice to pick if you wish to use Arc Souls which are handy for weakening others for you and Electrostatic Surge can help extend your Rift's ability for longer. I'm not a fan of the super though as it's quite risky for the setup we have going but if you're confident in using it then I would recommend you give it a shot. For weapons of choice, because of how flexible the build is and how it's been done before, you don't exactly need to have the same setup as shown. In fact, you can go with any standard bow and a 120 hand cannon and you will still get the same effects as long as they have a damage boosting perk activating. Even using the Dead Man's Tail can work. My primary will be the Biting Wind's Bow with Killing Wind and Swashbuckler and the bow will allow us in practice to gain 2 to 1 tap players across the board at an impressive range. Although bows are overlooked in PvP because of their draw speed and damage, which can be outpaced by hand cannons, scouts or assault rifles at effective ranges, bows are still incredibly deadly to use or face against because of their two tap nature and range that can surpass certain weapons. Killing wind on any weapon will increase our mobility, weapon range and handling per final kill we make, which is useful for keeping us on our toes and also easy to proc because our bows increase crit multiplier for two taps. With Swashbuckler added to this, we can basically increase our damage from 2 taps to 1 taps via crits landed while also gaining a mobility, range and handling increasement all in one. At plus 2 or 5 stacks, any crits you land within the perk activation will allow you to one shot and it's quite dirty once you get the flow of the perk going. Compare this now to Rampage, Swashbuckler is instant if you melee kill a player and that means its usage is going to be very high if you're someone that's able to pull this off a lot but of course risk will be involved. 
Either way, because of Bow's easy use for landing crits and using Empower on Rifts to increase damage, we don't have to worry about that extra risk in the build, but it's nice to have and know about. For our secondary, I'm using Ariana's Vow, and this is a very common weapon to use if you want to play off meta in PvP and one tap players a lot. Although the weapon is more of a PvE weapon for end game because of its perks, its usage in PvP can be frightening when built around correctly. With anything empowering based that can enhance the weapon's damage, the hand cannon can one shot a player via body, depending on how much health they have, or headshot them, which is pretty much a guaranteed kill. With a setup utilizing a power and rift, you can see how this can be very annoying to face, as whether you're full or low on health, you can get one shot no matter what. Even if they do kill you in the end, they pretty much give you free rift energy that can be used to repeat what you just did. So, as the old saying goes, what is dead may never die, or some, something like that. Only downside to this hand cannon is its clunkiness and kick after it's being fired, which can severely place you in a disadvantage. But as long as you've got cover, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. For heavy, I've chosen to use the 7th Sever Sword Machine Gun with Clown Cartridge and Forper Weapon, and machine guns in this build can be very effective for their high burst damage and large amount of ammo they can carry. With a hard hitting frame like this on top of my rifts, damage from this will be very scary to face against no matter the distance, since the TDK will pretty much prevent players engaging or running. At the same time, because of the amount of ammo we carry from one heavy, we can do burst damage to weaken players and then mop up with our primary to secondary if we wish. This can allow us to reserve ammo and increase damage potential from players who decide to engage us in close range or mid range engagements. For the stats, as you can tell, your rips are going to be very important in the setup, so it's wise we dump enough points into this area for a passive regen over time, but also not too much so that our Zotic doesn't go to waste. From there on out, it's then best to balance the rest of the stats out so we can have a passive ability regen across the board. This area should be pretty flexible because of the requirements being simple for all, so if you want to invest in more grenades, super or melee, and you have the points around, then I would recommend you go ahead and do so. In PvP, because of how fast paced everything is, getting injured will be frequent, which is great for activating the perk, and whether you live or die is no issue as you're still getting the effects overall, but at the same time, players come in all different types, and if you're unlucky, then you may get killed a lot more often than normal, which can be discouraging. The idea here is to balance it out so that we can passively gain our rifts through normal play, but at the same time, getting injured will give us a boost as well. AD may seem excessive considering how much support is going into this, but it's just a just in case we play a match where both sides are equal in terms of skills, and dying is less of a thing. Now, as rifts are pretty much covered, that leaves you with discipline, strength, and intellect at your disposal. Discipline will be passively regen over time via distribution, and the subclass tree perk, Ionic Trace, which will also affect all of our abilities in one go and generally will be used like normal. Strength will also be passive regen as well, but this can be improved on further, as this can correspond with the swashbuckler perk more often. Pushing this into 60 to 70 ranges will greatly allow you to use it more often, and also allow you a quick option to activate in your damage needs. And then, our intellect stat will be used quite a lot as well, but mainly to activate and then deactivate for a quick kill. This can also be increased if you plan to use this a lot more extensively with the Chaos Reach class, and combining Dynamo with the setup, which can allow us to have a further reduced cooldown as long as it's activated near an enemy. Aiming for roughly 60 should be fine as this will be backed up and covered by teammates as well, who will be producing orbs and, like I said, in short bursts will allow us to use it more often. As this is a PvP focused build, you don't need to heavily invest in specific stats like in PvE, as you're mainly going to be relying on one or two abilities at a time. So free range, like I mentioned earlier, is available. So as we have covered the main basics of what to bring, let's take a look at the mods and how the build plays. For head, we have Mine of Recovery, Dynamo, and Hand Cannon Final mod. Arm, we have Resilience, Bow Reloader, Overload Bow, and Taken Charge mod. In chest, we have Recovery, Concussive Dampener, times 2, and High Energy Fire mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Hand Cannon Scavenger, and Installation mod. Bond, we have Minor Intellect, Distribution and Focusing Lens mod. The following build has its place in PvP depending on the players you face, maps you play, and how much cover is available, and 9 times out of 10 you're always going to be having the edge on players the moment you are empowered, as it's pretty hard to avoid a one-shot weaponry or ability. 
If you understand key areas on maps that players will always go to, you can set up camp and pretty much use your teammates as bait to lure the enemy team in. And once they get into a fight, you can slowly empower yourself and start to pick players off one by one. For this, you will need to keep your distance if you wish to have the upper hand, and also be aware that to keep an eye on the mini-map to see how many enemies are around, and how many of your teammates are there to support. The setup is pretty simple to master after 2-3 to three games as you know what your weaknesses are, and then you can build upon it, which is where the stag comes in, as both being reliable, but also user friendly for those who are new to the setup. Like I mentioned earlier, whether you live or die is not really a concern as the stag helm will grant you rift energy every time you get injured, which you can then use to create a rift and 1-2 to two tap players from long to mid range distances. Over time, you'll learn to engage and disengage a lot more better, and will die a lot more less, which will mean your overall uptime will be increased while still utilising the ability. At the same time, you also have Charge with Light and High Energy Fire mod that will further boost your damage and allow you to extend your reaches further thanks to a masterwork weapon of your choice, or relying on your teammates. Pretty much, the whole setup is set for whatever comes your way, which is a very nice option to have. One thing I've also decided to add in is to use a new mod called Focus and Lens, which will increase our light based abilities damage on those affected by stasis. And this is something I haven't seen a lot of people actually talk about. Although stasis has been nerfed left, right, and center, they are still as powerful than ever before and will continue to dominate the playing field until something new comes along. This mod provides a 25% boost to your light abilities, which means if I use my pulse grenade on the target affected by the mod, Instead of him surviving 4 to 5 hits, it could easily be reduced down to 2 to 3 hits, which for a build already focusing on being annoying, fits just right in. In practice, you're not going to be going on long kill streaks with the setup as you don't have any close range encounters to prevent CQC players from rushing you. And on top of that, missing a short in certain engagements can lead to death because of how slow everything is to switch between two. None of these though should be of concern to you, as the build is doing what it's mainly designed to do, and as long as you keep your distance and move when you need to move, you'll be able to one tap players on a consistent basis. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep you up to date with Destiny and Titanfall 2 content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.